Hi, I'm Michelle the Irritable Vegan and this week we're all about quick and easy low FODMAP snacks. From crisps to smoothies, mug cakes to rice cakes and a legendary vegan dippy egg. All delicious and ready in five minutes or less. I hope you enjoy it. Let's begin with blueberry mug cake. Using gluten-free, low FODMAP flour, a 40 gram safe serving of blueberries and some rice protein powder for added oomph. Into a microwave safe mug, add three tablespoons of almond milk, one tablespoon of melted coconut oil, two tablespoons of pure maple syrup and one tablespoon of lemon juice. Briskly whisk the liquid before adding in 4 tablespoons of self-raising low FODMAP flour and 1 tablespoon of protein powder. Whisk thoroughly to incorporate the flour and form a thick, smooth batter. Add in 2 tablespoons or 30 grams of fresh blueberries, reserving a few to sprinkle over before serving. Gently fold the berries through the batter. Heat on full power for 1 minute. Continue to heat at 20 second intervals until the cake is set. Mine needed 2 minutes at 800 watts. The batter should be warm, just set and spongy. Some of the berries will pop and release their sticky juice throughout the cake. Pierce the centre of the cake with a skewer to double check the batter is fully set. Top with a few extra berries before digging in, but don't exceed the total safe serving of 40 grams. This super simple mug cake is a great way to satisfy a sweet tooth and introduce more fruit into your day. Next up, smoked paprika crisps. Use a mandolin on its thinnest setting or a very sharp knife to slice a medium potato as thinly as possible. You're looking for the slices to be translucent when you hold them up to the light. Also leave the skin on so that they hold their shape during cooking. Lay the slices out in a single layer on kitchen paper or a clean folded tea towel. You may need to do this in two batches depending on the size of your potato. Pat the slices firmly to help dry them out. They don't need to be completely dry but you just need the surface moisture removed. Working with half a batch at a time, sprinkle over a quarter of a teaspoon of smoked paprika, salt and pepper and a quarter of a teaspoon of oil. These can also be made in the same way without the oil if you prefer. Remove the microwave turntable and cover with a sheet of kitchen or greaseproof paper. Once again, lay the slices out in a single layer until the turntable is full. In my 800 watt microwave, I gave them three minutes before turning them over and giving a further two minutes. Keep an eye on them and work in 20 second increments until you get a feel for how long they take in your microwave. Experiment with your favorite herbs and spices and let me know the flavors you come up with in the comments below. These strawberry rice cakes couldn't be simpler. Thinly slice two to four strawberries depending on size. In a microwave safe bowl, melt half a teaspoon of coconut oil for roughly 30 seconds until it becomes liquid. Stir in one level tablespoon of cacao powder and mix until glossy and smooth. For optional sweetness, add a quarter of a teaspoon of maple syrup. I prefer to use powdered peanut butter, which I mix up in a separate bowl. Alternatively, you can melt regular peanut butter until it's smooth and easy to spread. Two regular rice cakes or 28 grams is a low FODMAP serving. Drizzle each rice cake with one tablespoon of runny peanut butter. Top the peanut butter with a generous serving of sliced strawberries. Then drizzle the rice cakes with the melted chocolate sauce. As strawberries have no upper limit, serve any leftover sauce with extra fresh berries for dipping. Now I have to admit I'm not usually a huge rice cake fan but this tastes so decadent and delicious it's definitely got me converted and it's fast becoming one of my favourite low FODMAP snacks. Now this one is really exciting and I've eaten it virtually every day since I created this recipe. Slice a safe serving of crusty low FODMAP bread into fingers. Something like sourdough or a sharp panini is perfect. Lightly brush the surface with olive oil. I find a pastry brush helps you use less oil and works it into the surface more evenly. Flip the bread over to do both sides before sprinkling with salt and pepper. Grill or broil under a hot grill for two minutes per side until golden. 
Meanwhile, into a blender, combine the flesh of half a chopped tomato, seeds removed, with a third of a cup of almond milk, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, one tablespoon of olive oil, one teaspoon of corn flour, half a teaspoon of Dijon mustard, an eighth of a teaspoon of black salt, and an eighth of a teaspoon of turmeric. Blend until the sauce is smooth and golden. Heat the sauce in a small non-stick pan until it thickens and bubbles. Mine only needed about 90 seconds. Stir frequently to avoid it sticking and burning. Pour the sauce into an egg cup or small bowl. This portion serves one and gives about one and a half egg cups full. Serve the dippy sauce hot alongside the toasted soldiers. This creamy, sulphurous sauce is not only delicious for dunking, but also when stirred through scrambled tofu or spaghetti carbonara. Now for something light and refreshing. Mint Choc Bubble Tea. I use caffeine-free Rubos tea, but it's not yet tested by Monash. If you're in the elimination phase, stick to regular black, green, peppermint or chai tea. Steep one tea bag with 300 ml of water for 5 to 10 minutes. Remove the tea bag. Combine one tablespoon of cacao with a splash of hot water to form a smooth runny paste. Add the cacao mixture to the tea and stir well. Sprinkle in one tablespoon of chia seeds. Add a small handful of mint leaves, but if you've used a peppermint tea bag then you can skip the fresh mint. Swirl and stir the tea until everything is submerged. Set the jar aside for at least 30 minutes so the chia can absorb the liquid. I prefer to make this and leave it in the fridge overnight. When you're ready to drink, remove the mint leaves from the tea. The chia seeds should have visibly hydrated and doubled in size. If you have a sweet tooth like me, then add one tablespoon of maple syrup to taste. Stir well and fill a glass three quarters full. Add ice and a generous splash of milk. I use almond milk. Give the whole thing another good stir and serve immediately garnished with fresh mint. Next up is spicy savoury popcorn. A third of a cup of corn kernels makes a generous low FODMAP portion of popcorn. Heat a heavy bottomed pan over medium high, add half a teaspoon of oil and swirl to coat the pan. Add the kernels to the warm oil. Try to spread them evenly across the surface of the oil and cover with a well-fitting lid. Shake the pan frequently to stop the corn from sticking. Allow the kernels to pop until the sound of popping reduces to a few seconds between pops. Remove the popcorn from the heat and add one teaspoon of FODMAP friendly curry powder or garam masala and a generous grind of salt and pepper. Stir the spices thoroughly through the popcorn. I use a basting brush to make sure each piece is fully coated. Now this recipe happily dispels the myth that smoothies are not suitable on a low FODMAP diet. To a blender, add a third of a cup of ice, 125 ml or half a cup of almond milk, 60 grams or quarter of a cup of coconut yogurt, 60 grams or quarter of a cup of canned coconut milk using the cream from the top rather than the water. Add 30 grams of ripe avocado and a FODMAP safe portion of green powder, such as spirulina or wheatgrass. Finish off with the zest and juice of one lime, roughly two tablespoons. Blitz everything together and if you like it sweet, add an optional tablespoon of maple syrup. Serve immediately, topped with a pinch of lime zest if you want to be fancy. And last but not least, these no-bake choc cookies are to die for. Made with oats, dark chocolate chips, brown sugar, chocolate peanut butter powder or regular peanut butter, coconut oil and a splash of almond milk. Heat two tablespoons of coconut oil over a medium heat. Add 110 grams or half a cup of brown sugar. I use Muscovada sugar which is not low FODMAP. Add half a cup or 125 ml of almond milk and stir well. 
Allow the syrup to come to a rolling boil for one minute. Be ready to turn down the heat sooner if you think it's going to boil over. Be very careful when handling hot syrup, this stuff can be lethal. After a minute, remove the syrup from the heat and stir in two tablespoons of chocolate peanut powder or regular peanut butter. Sprinkle over one cup or 120 grams of rolled oats and carefully stir into the syrup. Add 60 grams or a third of a cup of dark chocolate chips and gently fold everything together. On a non-stick mat or baking paper, scoop out one tablespoon portions, leaving space around each one to spread out slightly. I needed to use two trays and ended up with 12 cookies. Leave to cool in the fridge for at least one hour. I actually prefer mine a day or two later when the oats have softened slightly and the cookies have become chewier. These cookies are sweet, sticky and surprisingly Moorish. The quantities are safe for two cookies per portion, but one is usually enough for me. I really hope you've enjoyed these quick and easy low FODMAP snacks. Let me know which you'll try first in the comments below. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!